So as we come to Psalm 118, let's pray. Lord, we pray that through your Holy Spirit that you will show us wonderful things from your word. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, a few weeks ago when we had Psalm 27 in front of us, I suggested that the shape of it was rather like a sandwich. And today I'd like to suggest that Psalm 118 is rather like a layer cake, one of those rather indulgent creations that is a kind of Victoria sponge with um, a chocolate cake on top of it and a Black Forest Ghetto on top of that, and you're never quite sure what you're eating. Because you see, at one layer, Psalm 118 is a history psalm. It looks back to Israel and Aaron, and it was one of the six psalms that was traditionally sung at the Passover, looking back to God's great deliverance of his people from Egypt. But then it also reads like a psalm of David, as we read of being surrounded by warring nations. But then it also gets quoted by Isaiah and by Jeremiah, so maybe it's a prophetic psalm. But then as we near the end of it, we think, oh, but it must be a messianic psalm because there are references that we recognise in the New Testament. And the conclusion has to be that at different times it's all of those, and that's often the wonder of reading the Bible, when we see that it's all one wondrous story of God's merciful plan of salvation for mankind. Well, if we tried to read the, and, and uh, look at the whole psalm in 10 minutes, I think it would be rather like trying to eat a layer cake at one sitting. So after those introductory thoughts, let's read verses 1 to 4 and then 21 to 29 of Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his love endures forever. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvellous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, save us. O Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. With bows in hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give you thanks. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love endures forever. Well, like the five psalms that precede it, Psalm 118 is, of course, a psalm of thanksgiving, it opens and closes with a command to give thanks to the Lord. And the I will declarations in verses 21 and 28 are in obedience to that command. As the psalmist says to God, I will give you thanks. And so we discover in this psalm three reasons why we should give thanks to God. And firstly, because of his steadfast love, in verses 1 to 4. And the last verse, 29. So these first four and final verses have all the same refrain. His love endures forever. And the Hebrew word hesed that the NIV renders as love is one of the great theological words of the Old Testament. And the most literal translation of it would be steadfast love or covenant love. It's often translated as faithfulness or mercy. And the reason it's so important is because it's the word God used to describe himself. As God descended in the cloud on Mount Sinai for the giving of the law a second time, we read this in Exodus 34 verse 6. The Lord passed before Moses and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, 
slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. So God here describes himself as abounding in steadfast love toward Israel. And that in itself was and is an extraordinary miracle of grace. For what have the children of Israel just done? They worship the golden calf. So whenever we read Hesed, we always have to remember that it has overtones of God's amazing grace. As Dale Ralph Davis puts it, it's not merely love, but loyal love, not merely kindness, but God's dependable kindness. This is, in the words of the hymn, the love that will not let me go. So says the psalmist, we should give thanks to God first because of his faithful, steadfast, covenant, promise-keeping, gracious, merciful love. And secondly, because of his mighty deeds, in verses 5 to 18. Now, these were the verses we didn't read. But let me just pick out five things that, the, that God is to the psalmist in these verses. God, he says, is my refuge, verse 8, my helper, verse 13. And in verse 14, my strength, my song, and my salvation. And he tells us that although his situation is desperate, verses 10 to 12, yet, verse 16, the Lord's right hand has done mighty deeds. And I'm hearing echoes of another song of praise, sung some ten centuries later, and paraphrased in another well-known hymn, Tell Out My Soul the greatness of the Lord. Make known his might, the deeds his arm has done. His mercy, there's that word again, his mercy sure from age to age the same. His holy name, the Lord, the mighty one. And thirdly, we should praise God because of his great salvation, verses 19 to 29. And it's in this part of the psalm that we have those verses we find quoted in the New Testament, confirming that here is one of those moments when Christ is signposted, as it were, in the Old Testament. Verse 22, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone, is the verse that Jesus himself quotes at the conclusion of the parable of the tenants who kill the landowner's son. And Peter quotes it, in his sermon to the Sanhedrin in Acts 4, and again in his first epistle. And then there's verse 26, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, quoted by Jesus in his lament over Jerusalem, and then recorded in all four Gospels as the words that were sung about Jesus in his entry to Jerusalem on what we call Palm Sunday. And then in verse 27 we read, The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. And here's the Apostle Peter writing in the New Testament, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. And so that brings us full circle. Because how is our great salvation possible? But through the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, where God supremely showed us his steadfast love, his covenant love. So why should our lips and our hearts be full of praise to our Lord God? Because of his steadfast love, because of his mighty deeds, and because of his great salvation. Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord. Unnumbered blessings give my spirit voice. Tender to me the promise of his word. In God my Saviour shall my heart rejoice. Amen.